In this fifth section of the course, we will examine the duty to fulfill human rights. Um, one major debate about the duty to fulfill was, of course, initially, what was the content of this um, duty of the state? And e essentially, the duty to fulfill comprises three components. First of all, the state is expected to facilitate um, the enjoyment of, of human rights by adopting measures that essentially allow the market to provide the social goods that are required for the um, human rights, such as the right to education, the right to food, the right to, to housing, the right to health, to be adequately uh, satisfied. And this means, for example, building infrastructures with adequate public investments. It means linking producers to consumers. It means having trade policies that facilitate the workings of the market so that the market can provide the results that will result in the enjoyment of, of human rights. The duty to facilitate is one of three components of the duty to fulfill. And the second component is the duty to promote um, um, the various rights uh, that um, um, lead to the imposition of a duty to fulfill. Um, the duty to promote is really a duty for the state to inform people about the consequences of their choices and to provide them the um, information required for them to make uh, the right choices. For example, by teaching about adequate feeding practices in support of the right to food, or by providing information as to the health uh, consequences of certain lifestyles, the state contributes to the right to health. Um, so the duty to promote is essentially the provision by the state of information allowing people to to make the right choices. And then there's a third component of the duty to fulfill, and that is the, the duty to provide. Um, in some cases, indeed, the market will not suffice to allow people to have access to the goods that they, that they need, and it will be necessary for the state to provide these goods directly to the people um, in, in need. Um, for example, in, in situations of, of natural, natural disasters, where people risk um, starving, there's a duty for the state to provide um, food aid to the people and, and not to allow them um, to, to go hungry. Um, the state may have to provide people with access to um, healthcare centers, to, to schools, um, where, as is often the case, um, uh, private initiatives would not suffice to do so. So the duty to facilitate, to promote and to provide are the three components of this duty to fulfill and of course the significance of these three duties shall be different from from right to right and the concrete uh, translations will be different from right to right now um, beyond the normative content of the duty uh, to fulfill there have been in recent years uh, two major developments that we will study in this in this section a first development concerned the governance tools that um, states are expected to adopt in order to move towards the full realization of human rights. And we will examine two of these tools, the most important ones. The first is the adoption by the states of national strategies for the realization of human rights. Now, national strategies are conceived as multi-year action plans that define very clearly which measures should be taken within which time frame by which parts of government in order to move towards the full realization of human rights. And the advantages of these multi-year action plans, of these natural strategies, are manifold. For example, they allow a better coordination across different ministerial departments of the state to move towards the full realization of the right in question. They allow for a participation of civil society in the shaping of the priorities and in identifying the measures that should be, should be taken thus also improving accountability. And third, and, and perhaps most important of all, these national action plans, uh, because they define whom is responsible for waiting, for taking which measures within which time frame, they improve accountability. Governments will not be able to remain passive. They will have to justify themselves if they fail to attain certain objectives within the, the time frame specified, and they are expected, therefore, to make swift progress towards the full realization of the right in question. Um, and national strategies, in the best of cases, are adopted through a formalized procedure 
that is um, one that involves civil society organizations and the representatives of the weakest segments in society. And ideally, these procedures by which a national strategy should be adopted are defined in a framework legislation. And framework laws are indeed the second governance tool that we will examine. They are, if you wish, laws that define the various institutions and procedures through which national strategies are to be adopted. And ideally, these framework laws should define which role NGOs should play in the shaping of such national strategies, how they interact with, with government, how the recommendations are to be considered in designing the national strategy for the country that can support the, the full realization of the rights in, in question. So national strategies and framework laws are the governance tools that essentially will allow progressive realization not to remain, um, if you wish, too, too vague uh, an expression and will force the government to make swift progress towards the fulfillment of the right in question. Of course, uh, that begs the question of how fast must the government go? Which is the, um, the kind of progress that is expected from governments in a context of scarce resources when they may not have all the budgetary means required for the immediate fulfillment of um, human rights. And this is a, a second area which we will study, a second debate we will examine, which concerns uh, really the, um, the nature of the efforts that can be expected from states moving towards the full realization of human rights. Um, what is sufficient progress exactly? How fast must a government move towards the full realization of a particular right? Um, how many efforts should the state put into realizing human rights um, if we consider the public budget as a whole and, and the various priorities that the government has set for itself? Um, that is a still heavily debated issue. There is no consensus on what exactly is to be measured and, and how fast uh, a government must proceed towards the fulfillment of human rights. Um, and we will examine the various proposals that have been made in order to assess um, the quality of the efforts provided by the state.